Good morning. Good morning. Sorry about that. Just having a bit of technical issues as well as trying to get a coffee in me. How is everyone? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, Saturday morning, Lynn Sheard. Mark's getting a coffee. It took 15 minutes to get that coffee. It certainly did. Morning, Faith Goodman. Morning, if you're listening on podcast. Uh, once again, if you listen on podcast and you don't know who we are, which is probably unlikely, uh, all the names that I'm referring to are all the names of our dear, dear followers, friends, family guests, etc., etc., etc. Obviously, you've probably noticed there isn't a Curly Cooks today. That's because a very special Curly Cooks is landing later today, I think, at six o'clock. I think it's landing at six o'clock tonight. So you can have some nice, warm, cozy, cozy fun. Um, sorry, I'm absolutely exhausted. So I do apologize. I look like a ghoul, I look like an absolute ghoul. Um, how is everyone? How is everyone? Obviously, we're going to rush. We're going to rustle through the newspapers today. Um, you may have seen from my stories last night, we were posting or I was posting about the, um, well, let's not be, let's be frank about the uh, disproportionate or the beginning of a disproportionate assault, not just deal with Hamas, but on the civilians of Palestine. So it's a very sad, sad day because curiously, no one in the West and no one anywhere has even mentioned the fact that uh, turning off the lights, turning off all means of communication, all satellite, uh, all mobile phones, all internet in an area of two, uh, with a population of 2 million, mostly a million children, I think, are in there or under 14s, um, and with no way to light their evacuation or how to escape other than with the light of explosions from Israeli uh, bombs, missiles, and uh, artillery. Uh, the, uh, the, I, 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 I'm breathless. It's almost like it doesn't, we can't even say anything. I'm breathless that no one, not a single, single leading Western leader, has uh, said that this is a step too far. It's, uh, it, it, I, it is quite, quite astonishing. I mean, I, I, yeah, I can't believe it. Um, other than I think James cleverly said something along the lines of we stand in, in line with Israel. Quite, quite phenomenal. Quite phenomenal. And I will use the analogy again. I will use the analogy again. In fact, no, there was a better analogy yesterday. Someone said if you had a sniper in a school, and that's the analogy, the sniper is Hamas, the school is, is Gaza, would you blow up the school to get the sniper? Why is that not a fair? Why is that not a fair uh, comparison? It, 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 it's literally, as my blind chi Alfie says, my mind has exploded. It's just unbelievable. It, it's it's not unbelievable. It's actually frightening. It's actually frightening. We've got to a situation where if you call for a ceasefire, we, this is the situation we've got in our so-called rules, you know, what's it called? Rules observing order. Isn't that it? That we observe certain rules of, of, of engagement. That to use the word ceasefire is to somehow support terrorism or be anti-Semitic or... It rules based order. Thank you very much. Rule, where's, okay, so this is the rules based order. Rules based order has allowed this to happen. Let me give you a little example of how a cover up. Do you, do you remember the equation we've used on, on other subjects about cover ups? Last night, the lights went out across Gaza. Every major charity, forget politics, forget politics, UNICEF, uh, the Red Crescent. The uh, the French sans I, I can never remember um, my French is awful you know the French the French uh, sort of Red Cross um, they all lost contact with all of their personnel families couldn't contact each other when explosives hit no one could light the way other than with the bomb to escape they closed down the internet they closed down mobile phone correspondence and connection in so doing. They also prevented, or not completely, because there was some, they've also, they also managed to almost completely prevent the ability to film, monitor, cover, or show what happens under the cover of darkness. 
turning off the mobile phone networks or taking out the mobile phone networks and taking out the internet providers is a war crime because it meant that none of the emergency services could operate. The Israeli government said contacted Reuters and said they couldn't guarantee journalists' safety. We would, why are they saying that? They wrote letters to Reuters and to the Associated Press in France saying take appropriate measures for your journalists. What's the suggestion there? What do you do as, a, as, the, as the boss of journalists? You, it's, it's to get your bosses to pull them out. This is not self-defense anymore. There is footage and there is a testimony from a former Israeli Defense Force uh, Gaza border guard who claims that the entire attack, the original attack, was not only known about, but was potentially, potentially, and this is suggested by an IDF, Israeli Jewish, former border patrol guard that he believes there's some inside job aspect to it. This is, we, I'm telling you now, this is the most shocking moment in global politics ever. Not that Israel didn't have the right to have an immediate response of some form. No one said that. No one said that. There is a word called proportionate and dis two words, proportionate and disproportionate, that seem to have just sort of vanished out of our diaries, di diaries, dictionaries. Where's Elon Musk with Starlink when an entire population in the Gaza Strip has no satellite coverage? Where's, you know, propping up and supporting humanity at this point? Why have we got this strange idea that some conservative uh, ministers have promoted, which is if you're in a sanctioned national army uniform, you simply can't be a terrorist. What do we make of the fact that we received a message from Nadia's parents saying that in the West Bank, in the West Bank, which is the less hostile or sort of less hotly contested, isn't, isn't run by Hamas. In the West Bank, Israel are dropping pamphlets, encouraging people, encouraging Arabs and Palestinians to evacuate to Jordan for their safety, whilst Israeli settlers are illegally taking over their homes. Where is the rules-based order there? Why are none of the war crimes or acts of illegality that are being conducted by certain aspects, not all, but certain aspects of the Israeli uh, nation, why are they not called out in the same way? Why is Boris Johnson in the Telegraph today saying that everyone not seeing uh, October 7th for what it is has somehow lost humanity, when on October the 6th there had been for a very long time, zero humanity nor interest in everything that led to October the 7th. We are picking and choosing the parts of the narrative to be outraged by. There was stuff to be outraged by before October the 7th, but because it involved Arabs and Palestinians, it was of zero interest to the British press. But because the great big dramas, which were awful, that happened on October the 7th happened, that's the starting point for the British press. That is the starting point for the British press. Where are the United Nations, Saab Turbo? Israel doesn't recognise the United Nations. Self-defence is not an argument or a description of what is happening right now. There will be virtually zero evidence of anything awful having been done last night, unless a hospital's blown up, because all mobile networks and all internet connection was turned off. When there's no evidence of a cover-up, it's usually when a cover-up has been successful. That's what happened last night. That's what was happening last night.
But let's go to the front pages of all of our papers and let's look at the language they use. OK, so Daily Mail, Gaza pounded as invasion looms. Let's go into the small print. Israel unleashes unprecedented strikes, phones and Internet cut off. You kind of you kind of you, you kind of can't not say it. You have to say it because it happened. The Guardian, no fuel, no power, nowhere safe, life on streets of Gaza. Israel's ground forces advance on Gaza, the Daily Telegraph. Very benign sort of description there. Oh, that's, that's incredibly reasonable. Meanwhile, you have children, you have parents, you have people scurrying around in the dark, not knowing where to go as bombs land. Carnage looms as Israel ramps up attacks on Gaza. No reference there on the front page as to how they did it. Imagine the fear. Imagine the fear. Gaza blackout as Israel launches onslaught. Um, Iran. Oh, look, this is this is this is even more telling. Look, the Times doesn't even have it on its front page. The Times is busy pointing the pointing pointing the finger at Iran. Iran is hijacking UK protests because, of course, the reason that narrative has to stick is not to say that Iran will not be involved. Iran are hijacking British protests. There's another one today because the press don't want to hear or even vaguely believe that quite so many people might have a feeling about this different to the mainstream media. That still has heart, still has compassion and still has care. It's quite astonishing. It's quite astonishing. It's quite astonishing. Not a single. Where is Starmer? Where is Sadiq Khan even? He said he called for a ceasefire yesterday. Where are they all? Are they are they on? I mean, I haven't had a chance to look at any of the kind of vague sort of bits of output on the news channels. Are any of them there condemning this, condemning last night? No, 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 no. They turned the they basically sunk Gaza into darkness for an entire night. And none of us will know. And what will happen is we'll get evidence of this, that and the other only from his. Why is it? Why is it that Biden trusts the information that comes from Israel and doesn't trust the information that comes from Palestine when both sides of the equation are committing atrocities and acts of gross illegality? The message, the message today from um, from uh, th th this is quite astonishing. This is quite astonishing. So I'm not going to I'm not going to read all of it. Um, da, 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 da. So this is please go and check out Daru Malkyu, D-A-R-U-A-M-A-L-K-Y-U is former Israeli Defense Force border uh, Gaza border um, soldier uh, you know, unit. And he gives you a really um, sort of frustrated assessment of why he thinks there's a lot to be questioned about how the original attack and why the original attack happened. As we all know, it got buried in the news flow. Egypt notified Israel that this was coming or something was coming. Um, and this is from this is from Jordan. This is from Jordan. While nobody's looking in the other while everybody's looking in the other direction, Palestinians Okay, this is coming from the Middle East now. This is from Jordan. Palestinians are now being dragged from their homes on the West Bank and either being injured, slaughtered, imprisoned, arrested, or ordered to go to Jordan. Yesterday, they got stickers on their cars telling them what would happen to them if they didn't leave immediately. Why isn't the press reporting any of that? Why isn't the press reporting that? frightening isn't it i mean it's really frightening it's it's something very worrying and look at him starmer faces crisis as senior party figures question gaza stance yeah because you know what you can have a slightly more complicated thought or position on this which is a ceasefire needs to happen humanitarian aid needs to go in negotiations need to be encouraged because after something like four weeks Self-defense isn't an argument. It isn't. It's like if you get punched in the face in the street, you will naturally turn around and hit. And you have every right to do that. You might naturally turn around if they've hit you and your family, turn around and hit and hit a little bit harder and hit a, little, hit, hit a bit again. You don't have the right in a rules-based order 
to go home that night and get up again and go round the person's house and start beating them up again. You just, otherwise, chaos looms. And the West is sanctioning this. We talked about appeasement in World War II. This is, this is appeasement, but not even able to hide behind something. What I'm amazed by is this is, this is in plain sight. It's the most shocking, shocking dereliction of duty by the West I have ever, 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 ever witnessed. And the reason that we can't mobilise any kind of strong argument against it is because none of the mainstream media is interested. None of the mainstream media is interested. It's so petrifying. Grand Central Station in New York had to be closed after the largest peaceful demonstration in 20 years in New York closed it down. Guess who was demonstrating at Grand Central Station yesterday? Guess who was demonstrating at Grand Central Station yesterday? Can you guess? I'm going to leave it to you for a bit. Just sorry, just doing this. Um, Jewish people. Jewish people. It was... Jewish people against the occupation and against the war, wanting a ceasefire. We've gone way, you know, we've gone way beyond the idea that, you know, calling for, you know, to weaponize the word ceasefire is one of the most spectacularly astonishing things. I thought I, I never, I, I, I literally, you know, the telegraph saying Sadiq Khan brings shame on Londoners for suggesting there should be a ceasefire. Are we really? You know, I said yesterday, Nick Ferrari invoking um, historic atrocities to justify atrocities today. Could you imagine, imagine rightly so, the outrage, the absolute outrage if anyone invoked the biggest atrocity we know that was conducted during World War II to justify any kind of attack on Israel. That would be diabolical. It would be lamentable. It would be something to condemn. But what? But it's fine to pull upon Dresden, Nagasaki, Hiroshima, other other moments in recent history where um, you know uh, collateral damage and civilian deaths is just part of the equation. And then if you go on a march. And you vaguely step to the right a bit too much, the mainstream media will get a photograph of something and not talk about the hundred thousand people who are saying something meaningful and home in on the one idiot who's standing there with a a, a racist. Uh, you know, we Boris Johnson called his uh, Muslim women. He likened them to letterboxes. That's race hate. That's racism. Jane Bentley, I don't know what the fuck British people can do. But what I'm amazed by is, here's what's going to happen. A number of the Arab states that are themselves around, you know, sympathetic to Palestine, who are pussyfooting about and not making, you know, not doing this, not doing that, keeping it all just kind of duh, 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 hoping it might just simmer, simmer down. There's going to come a point with this where the, the grassroots populations will get really disenfranchised with the rulers of those countries too. So, you know, it is kind of incumbent on the Arab states to actually take a bit of a firmer stance on this. Not cause war. No one wants a war. But it, it, it this is this is catastrophic. Sorry, I did I didn't want to home in on this for too long, but it, it's quite watching it happen last night, watching it play out last night and then this morning. Uh, come on. Oh, get his face off. Oh my god. Sorry. It's just it's just ridiculous. Okay. OK, we're going to move on because, I mean, as you say, what the hell can we do here? Oh. Nick White, absolutely, that's what it is. Do you think the West is too scared to support Palestine because of the history of the Jews and don't want to appear anti-Semitic? Yeah, but there's no, of course, and no one wants to be seen to potentially support. But what's happened is Israel as a nation has managed to weaponize any 
criticism of its foreign policy or its actions in Palestine or the West Bank, uh, in Gaza Strip or the West Bank, um, by saying that if you are critical, you have to be anti-Semitic. No, you don't. It's absolute bollocks. We need to get past that nonsense rubric that the mainstream media is trying to suggest. That's the reason that they're saying calling for a ceasefire is wrong, because somehow you're saying that, you know, it, 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 somehow on some level, it's just absolute bollocks. It's absolute bollocks. I've never, I've never known a moment where the word Islamophobic hasn't come up. Well, have you seen the? Have you? Has anyone seen? Just quickly, final point: the TikToks, the films on on X, Twitter, everywhere, of Israeli civilians and Israeli soldiers mocking the deaths of Palestinian children and mothers. Has anyone seen them? I mean, literally, caricatures everywhere. Now that's not representative of. Any is you know an Israeli Jewish um, uh, you know uh, citizen, but no one's no one none of the press are drawn to that. Why aren't the press featuring something going shocking? If those films were about if those anti-Semitic films were, they would be pumping them into the papers. It's so tilted. It's so tilted. It's so tilted. If you are a poor Arab, your Arab lives matter. As much as Jewish lives matter, but Arab lives right now are right at the bottom, right at the bottom, right at the bottom, right at the bottom. But we were all up in arms and outrage and everyone kind of, oh, even if you didn't like taking the knee and all that bollocks, everyone kind of agreed it shouldn't happen. We've got, how have we gone past that? It's astonishing. It's astonishing. Anyway, let's move. Let's do that really weird thing. Reese Roberts, unfortunately, the Israeli army have a huge disdain towards Palestinians and have done despicable things to them over time, battering, breaking bones, imprisoning them. I was saying yesterday, Reese, it's considered sport, not amongst all, but amongst some in the Israeli army, taking the legs out from, from, from kids. Because kids, I mean, here's the other thing, because kids throw stones. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, the greatest, one of the greatest, I think it's the 18th strongest military in the world, and they're, ooh, they're scared of stone throwing stone throwing so they shoot the legs out of a child every life matters but right now palestinian lives matter slightly more because they're the ones who are literally about to experience potentially in darkness under cover of night the start of something that feels not is but could be a genocide of sorts That's why, you know, this thing of we, we mustn't say one thing because we're then ignoring. No, right now it's this. For, for the right amount of time, it was Israel. And if Israel weren't doing what they were doing, it would be Israel and Palestine right now. But it's not. Right now it's Palestine. It's as simple as that. Spooky spending. Let's shift. Let's do that. Let's turn the truck in a different direction. Spooky spending. Halloween purchases set to creep. Let me just get rid of all the... Uh, um yeah starmer get yeah, come on grow some grow some starmer um oh what have i got have i got these in the wrong oh, i think i've got these in the wrong order have i um judge orders aristocrat to shorten child's name this was where have i got oh god i've got all my all my all my stories in the wrong order uh hang on have i oh yeah no i have Oh, how annoying. Hang on. Let me just pull this down. Let me just pull this up. You can all talk. Oh, look, the Asda Gimp. Uh, yeah, we don't want to go there, do we? Oh, hang on. Let me just get this back. So this was, so let's get some funny stories. So spooky spending, Halloween purchases are set to cre creep up. Here we go. Um, spooky spending. Um, Halloween purchases set to creep past one billion. This Halloween is tipped to be the biggest ever, which is kind of curious, isn't it? When you think that apparently you know, inflation, cost of living and all that kind of stuff. Uh, Gen Z will go biggest for Fright Night with 87% planning to shell out at least £46 each on plastic. It's just as big as Christmas. We were talking about this. I mean, Halloween when I was a kid really, really wasn't uh, a big thing. I mean, the first, does anyone else remember the first time I came across Halloween was um, when uh, E.T. came out. Does anyone else remember that? E.T.? So don't worry, we're getting back to the gimp, Jenny J. It was a curious, it was a curious segue for sure. Uh, did anyone else have the whole Halloween thing? 
in, in the UK. Zoe, did you have it um, in um, in? Uh, 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 uh. Oh, here we go. Did you have it in in Ireland? I love E.T. Do you know about that moment where he's sort of st walking down the street and you're like, oh, my God. Beth Scammell, my house is decorated top to bottom for Halloween. My partner is mad for it. I mean, I love it. I would have loved it as a kid. I'd have loved to have gone trick-or-treating. Um, but it doesn't... I, think, I, don't, I wonder if trick-or-treating happens anymore. I mean, even in the time since our kids were young, it's so bloody dangerous out there. Um, this other headline made me laugh. Look, judge orders aristocrat to shorten child's name. This is in Spain. I just pulled this because I wanted to have a go at trying to pronounce it. Um, a Spanish duke has been ordered by a judge to rename his daughter because her name is too long to be legally registered. It's kind of a good point. I suppose you could give a name to a child or a relative, couldn't you? That just goes on forever. I mean, it can't go on forever because you'd have to at some point pause. Well, you'd have, well, they'd probably have to shut the offices where you're filling the name in, right? So... The Duchess of, where are we? Fernando, da 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 da, somebody down there to the, attempted to register their second child with the name. This was the name that they tried to register their name with. Sophia, oh, hang on, no. Sophia Fernanda, Dolores, Cayetana, Teresa, Angela, de la Cruz, Michaela, del Santissimo Sacramento, del Perpetuo Socorro, de la Santissima Trinidad y de todos los santos. Uh, the Spanish court said no more than one compound name may be recorded, nor more than two simple ones. They, But they did say, they did say, oh, don't worry. You can just call her Sophie for sure. <laughs> what a remarkable name. What a remarkable name. Um, we're going to now, I'm now going to hit you with, um, with this. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my Italian nan's name. About 30 middle names. Nanny Di's got about five middle names. Okay, so front of the Daily Star. The Asda Gimp, Oddball, Terrorised Village and Cut Price Clobber from store. What I love about this headline and, and the story inside is they're talking about how cut price his Gimp outfit is. You know, I mean, some Gimp outfits look pretty damn sophisticated. You know, you see them in mags and stuff like that, people on Instagram. And they're sort of all credibly sort of stylized and Jeff Coonsy and all that kind of stuff. His was just, I think his was a rubber glove or something. Uh, so the man convicted of being fetish suited figure. Who's, oh, so a man has been convicted. I think he had to pay something like three hundred pounds to each each woman that he went up to. Do you want to see a shot of him in action? It's a whoa. I mean, that's bloody scary, isn't it? That's bloody scary. Um, Somerset Gimp told police rubber faced. <laughs> I mean, I can't stand the Telegraph at the moment. But that is quite a funny headline. Somerset Gimp told police rubber faced lie. I'm not the Gimp. <laughs> rubber face lie i like that i like that um i thought this was interesting how long are you willing to sit through a film how long are you willing to sit through a film um we did killers of the uh killers of the flower moon last week and three and a half hours squeezed it in at the end of the day it's one of those you know get get, get it right in at the end of the day a film like but who would like the good old fashioned intermission brought back who would like who would like you know the sort of interval in the middle of a film anyone because apparently a couple of cinemas have been introducing them and um, um, and uh, apparently the, the distributors of the film are uh, were up in arms. A film, 10 minutes, Dawny Harvey. You struggle with over two and a half hours. Yeah, I mean, three, three and a half hours is massive, isn't it? It's massive. 90 minutes, Rio Chap, or as, as Hitchcock said, the, the duration of your bladder. For as long as your bladder can last, that's it. Well, this is the story, obviously. Intermission possible, relief from ever longer films coming soon. It was, it's long. I mean, I didn't actually feel it in that one, but my God, you know, there was something kind of exciting, wasn't there, about a film intermission? You'd get, you'd get an interval and you'd, you'd get, you'd get your ice creams and someone would come down the middle and you'd get those ice creams with a hard bit of strawberry kind of, crystallized stuff at the center it was, it was a good thing i'm gonna have a go at this next week binhoff method for home ice baths what do you reckon should do it for instagram shall we 
This is making use of your recycling bins. I'm not too sure if there are holes in the bottom of them. I've no, if I look at that, he's obviously put a plastic bag in there, hasn't he? Binhoff method for home ice baths. Should we do it? I think it would be fun. I think it would be fun, don't you? <laughs> Bev Berry, Titanic stole three hours of my life. Imagine trying to watch the Titanic whilst lying in. Our, well, I guess this, this is a little bit like Leonardo DiCaprio, isn't it, in the film? Apparently he was freezing. ITV crisis over Gino Stunt Hell. Uh, this is this is a tobogganing crash. This does put you in mind of, do you remember those awful stories back in the day of stunts that went wrong? And was it Noel's house party with the atrocious, awful one, the helicopter crash? Uh, ITV's new big budget travel show has been pulled after host Gino DeCampo crashed during a tobogganing stunt. Cast and crew on Emission Impossible were all sent home. I mean, after the Freddie Flintoff um you know crash the you know i think tv just needs to calm down stars fury i think a family and another toboggan hit into him it could have been could have been really really awful um arts naked truth this is is anyone here a fan of um sorry all my stories are completely gone in the wrong order how annoying i was thinking david hockney inspires a return to life drawing classes Thing is, I, I mean, I wouldn't want to giggle in a life drawing class. Life, draw, life drawing is nudes, isn't it? But I would. I would giggle. I would giggle. I would giggle. Art's Naked Truth. Hockney inspires a return to life drawing classes. Um, I just don't like, I don't like Hockney's paintings, to be honest. I know, I know you're not, it's, it's unfashionable to say that, but I don't. It's not, I'm not, I don't sign up to that idea that anyone or a kid could do that, but I just, I just don't like them. There he is with Harry Styles. Uh, God, uh, this is now, this is like Russian roulette, these headlines. I'm Literally, I'm just, I don't even know what the next one's going to be. Let's have a look. The Platonic Co-Parents Club. Um, this is a specialist agency that's helping strangers start a family without even a kiss. What do you think of this? He was not looking for sex or love or anyone who was even physically attracted to. He just wanted to be in a family just wanted a family i can see a can anyone see a new format for a show not married at first sight but family at first i don't know croissant um here this the, the, this couple are a couple among thousands in the uk who skip dating and romance to have children with friends or strange strangers they meet through apps um oh so this began with gay men and women getting together to have children this has spread to heterosexuals who fear they have left having children too late, but haven't found the right romantic partner. So you connect up with someone you'd like to have a kid with, but you're not necessarily romantically involved with. I suppose you get so you get all the joy of a family and none of the kind of commitments nor sort of responsibilities, I guess. Is that right? Is that right? I like this. The key to getting Phil's job is not to be an arsehole. That's very hard to find in telly. Someone who isn't an arsehole. Let's have a look. Here we go. So who's going to be favourite? Who would you like to replace Phil? You've got Craig Doyle, 6-1. to one. Steve Jones at 8-1. to one. Dermot O'Leary, 3-1. to one. Ben Shepard at 10-1. to one. Rylan Clark at 16-1. to one. And Marvin Humes at 25-1. to one. But I, like, I just like that headline. He reckons that... Um, Joel Domit says he knows how not to be an arsehole. That's why he'd be good. Who, who would you like, Ben? Sarah with them to Ben Shepherd, Craig Doyle. Um, Ryland, I think Ryland Clark would be great. I like Ryland. Buglins, I thought we'd I thought we'd uh, I thought we'd go back to um, we'd have our bed bug watch. This is family holiday ruined by bed critter flare up. Bloodthirsty bed bugs have been trying to sink their teeth into holiday makers. Oh, this is horrendous. One family claims they were forced to abandon their trip to Skegness after finding an infestation of them. This is making, is this not making you and anyone you know not want to, you know, if you're traveling somewhere and you go to a travel lodge or something like that. Suddenly, I mean, I wonder if hotels are, oh, suddenly, immediately, I'm just getting, I'm getting itchy. Is anyone else itchy? What have we got? Best, best let's have a look at this. Best bed and breakfast where's this one? Oh my god I literally I can't find my stories guys this is so annoying here we go let's try this this is it best spread best bed spread for breakfast what's your favorite breakfast in bed 
Have you got fresh orange juices? Oh, 10, top 10 breakfast in bed items. Fresh orange juice. Oh, gives me, gives me um, uh, heartburn. Uh, two, a full English breakfast in bed. Three, a pot of classic breakfast tea. Is that you, Joni? Did you just say a cup of tea? Four, a piping hot coffee. That's obviously me. Five, a slice of toast. Six, a, a bacon sandwich. Seven, croissant. Eight eggs on toast. So top is fr fresh orange juice. Really? I don't believe that. I hate orange juice in the morning. It's always bitter. It's always bitter, don't you find? Dough! This is a good one. Penny pinchers make the hole in bagels bigger. <laughs> it's, look at the top. It's the middle diddle. Bagel lovers are cheesed off because the hole in the ring-shaped roll has got bigger. Penny pinching makers have cut the amount of bread in, in each and increased the gap in the middle. <sighs> That's our existential madness, isn't it? The hole is bigger. But I suppose they could also not only make the hole bigger, but they could make the ring narrower. And then it becomes a hula hoop. Oh my God. Our worlds are falling apart. What have we got here? Buzz. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, look. Yeah, no, there's some order now. Buzz off. No more sex toys. Can you believe this? After having seen Nadia's dad standing, wielding a, a, a dildo, which is very odd. The charity shop has issued a plea to customers after it received unwanted, raunchy donations of used and unused sex toys. Imagine dropping off a used sex toy at a charity shop. No shame. Not at all a little bit embarrassed just to hide it. Oh, my God. Absolutely remarkable. What have we got next? See if I've got it. Yep, carrots on your hairy biker. Chemo, uh, oh, bless him. Um, Dave Myers, hairy, hairy biker, has revealed that having chemotherapy for cancer has given him a phobia of carrots. Carrots? On your hairy biker, says Telly Dave. TV chef said a peculiar side effect of the treatment was that he developed a fear and loathing of the vegetable. Um, he said that instead, almost the only thing he could eat for a while were dumplings and gravy cooked by his mate, hairy biker Simon King. I suppose one of the one of the strange byproducts of uh, that you don't hear about, I guess, with uh, with chemo. Oh, get a room. Stress. It'll be Kistery, the office where Hancock snogged a lover turned into a chill area. Can you believe that the room that he had this it, it, this sort of cl clinch in has? Is there going to be a blue plaque there one day? The office in which cheating Matt Hancock was caught kissing his lover has been ripped out by the Department of Health and it's being turned into a chill out area. Stress, it'll be kistery. Do you get it? Stress, it'll be kistery. Just go in here and chill out. But now, if you ever go in there, all you're going to think about is him having a good old sort of fiddle, almost. Boozing makes men flop in bed. I pulled this because I thought, is that news? Is that actually news? It's just a statement of fact, isn't it? So I didn't even bother to read the story. Um, Toy Story gives us a buzz. What's your favourite family film? Obviously, top of this list is Toy Story, the original, followed by the original Lion King, followed by Home Alone, followed by the original, I'm pleased with this, followed, followed by the original Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, which is one of my favourites too. Shrek, E.T. These are the top picks. Yeehaw! Um, the Disney movie beat beloved classics such as Home Alone, Shrek and E.T. The average family will watch 30 films this winter, but it can take nearly 15 minutes to pick one. Who else has that? Picking a film to watch as a family it has become one of those sort of really stressful moments, hasn't it? In a, in, a, in, a, in a day, in a life, in the world, as we know it. Um, what have I got here? Uh, oh, just, just quickly, I didn't, I didn't photograph this one, but look. TV show sends in a clown. Bozo signs up with GB News. I will do Carla Hatcham, absolutely. And uh, let's let's show some. Uh, I think I've just got the images here. So look, here we go. This is a, this is incredibly moving. Look at this. Um, red maples on a 418 fallen Canadian soldiers. Brilliant red maple trees light up the sides of a road to honour fallen Canadian soldiers. They were planted by the A3 near Liphook. Isn't that pretty? Isn't that pretty? I don't know. Just love that. I thought that's, that's gorgeous. Um, look at these fellas. Look at these guys. Aren't they cute? Um, this is a plant pot in Preston. I bet you knew that though, didn't you? It's in Preston. It provides the perfect home for harvest mice to stay away from predators such as cats, but not to avoid predatory photographers. Oh, so cute. I just love this photo. I don't know. I just, I just wanted to show you this. I just thought it was lovely. Look, 
as Bill Nye, a portrait of Bill Nye forms part of an exhibition, Storytelling at Maddox Gallery in Mayfair. Isn't that wonderful? What great fact. I can't work out whether they've set for a film set and he's kind of like walking to the makeup area or whether he's been sort of uh, digitally plopped on top of that. Look at this. This image is, is quite, quite spectacular. This is um, Emerging Roots um, in, uh, in Brazil. Sort of, it's, uh, this is from an exhibition uh, or a competition called uh, Mangroves and Landscape. <laughs> so it's a beautiful mangrove. Look at that. Isn't that quite something? Stunning. Uh, this, oh, well, this is, what is this? This is, I just love this. I love these sort of photos. This is a green-headed fly. <laughs> Look like someone I used to drink with years ago. Oh, I love this photo too. This is... Um, this is uh, the dra drag artist Teal de Luna performs as part of events marking pride in the Philippines. Isn't that a great photo? Isn't that a great photo? Uh, and I'm just checking. Yep. Yeah. And, that, and that's your lot, guys. Well, they're all oh, just saying how to say no with confidence. I was going to read through the, the various ways in which you, you don't just go into a default yes, but we've run out of time. So I'm going to say no. So, guys, have look, have a lovely day. And as I say, um, the Curly Cooks will be landing at six o'clock tonight. Um, I, I'm not entirely sure. It might be, it might be a uh, premiere, but it might not be. Anyway, guys, look, I hope you have a lovely day. And uh, yeah, if you can keep spreading the word, I think we have to keep focusing on what is going on in, in Gaza, unfortunately. Otherwise, we will all have to hang our heads collectively in shame. Um, once you know, what what is the end game here? What is the end game? Because by even once you've got rid of every member of Hamas, you are going to have weaponized a new incoming even more traumatized than the last um, and radicalized popul young population. I mean, none of the survivors of this onslaught now are going to be favorable, are they, to Israel? So where are they going to go and where is that anger going to go? And, you know, it, it, this isn't the solution. It's, it's so obvious. But anyway, sending love, have a safe day and see you on the other side. Mi